This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today, my special guest is Steve Aegis, uh, the Wildlife Refuge Manager for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, located in Brunswick, Vermont. Now, tell us about these uh, uh, duck stamps. Uh, I was a, uh, well, I am a stamp collector, and I always remember in the back of my United States album, there were duck stamps, and I didn't collect them because they were too expensive at the time. Sure. They sure. weren't uh, used for mail, but tell us what a duck stamp is and a little bit about the history of them, if you could. Sure. So so broadly speaking, they're, um, if, you, if you hunt waterfowl, you are required by law to have a federal waterfowl stamp. And what that allows is the, the hunting of waterfowl being a migratory species. Migratory birds are protected and managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So any hunter in any state is going to have a state hunting license, but they're also, if they're going to hunt waterfowl, need a, a federal stamp. And more than 90% of the cost of that stamp directly goes to the conservation of wetlands specifically for waterfowl through the National Wildlife Refuge System. Um, so at this time, millions of acres across the country have been permanently protected for waterfowl directly through hunters supporting the use of that stamp. So there is a long legacy of hunters in this country supporting the conservation of wetlands for the protection of wildlife, specifically waterfowl. So there is an art contest associated with the waterfowl stamp every year. And there really, there's two categories. There's the adult stamp, which is what most people are familiar with. And the design for that stamp every year, there's an art contest associated with that. And then there's also the junior waterfowl stamp as well. And that's not associated with hunting. It's it's more of an art and education contest. And that's directly, in, uh, there's a coordinator in every state. And then within every state, it's free and open to the public. So kids from pre-K to 12th grade can enter into the art contest. And on average, there's about 27 to 29 pieces of artwork submitted nationwide every year into the Youth Waterfowl Art Contest. In Vermont, um, we're not really known for having a lot of waterfowl. Certainly where I'm at in Essex County um, is not really an area that's well known for waterfowl. But if you get over towards Lake Champlain, um, certainly a lot more ducks in that area. Um, and in Vermont, we see about 100 pieces of artwork that get submitted into the federal competition for the state of Vermont every year. And that fluctuates sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, and then within the junior duck stamp program, there are four age categories. So you've got category one being pre-K to third grade, category two being fourth grade to sixth grade, category three being seventh to ninth, and then category four being 10th, 11th, and 12th. And ultimately, the art contest produces a best of show. And then each state's best of show goes on to compete against one another, typically in Washington, D.C., every year. And then there is a national best of show who is the, the artist, the, the winner that wins the national competition. So each year in March, the artwork is submitted to my office. And then we have an open public art contest that moves around to different locations in the state. Last year, we held the art contest at the Fairbanks Museum. This year, the art contest will be at the Vermont Institute of Natural Science, and that is going to be on my calendar in front of me. I believe it's Thursday, March 28th from 930 till noon. So that's an open public event if anyone's interested. And all the artwork that gets submitted for the Federal Junior Duck Stamp Program for the state of Vermont will be included in that art contest at VINS in March. And the best of show will then go on to compete against the best of show for each state within the nation. That's great. How long has uh, this competition been going on? The competition started for the, uh, the the youth waterfowl program, the junior duck stamp program, started in the 1980s. And in Vermont has been going on for more than a quarter of a century. Hmm. And the uh, entries, uh, have any of these uh, uh, entrants gone on to uh, 
uh, achievement in art or maybe even working in the field uh, of protecting waterfowl, if you know. I don't know the answer to that, Dennis. I've been overseeing, administering the, the, um, the junior duck stamp program in Vermont uh, for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for the past five years. So I, I couldn't speak to the, the previous 20 plus years. Um, typically, the best of show artwork that is submitted and wins in Vermont is typically within the age category of that 10th, 11th, 12th. Um, those students are the ones that are committing a, a significant amount of time and energy into their artwork. Um, the majority of winners for the junior duck stamp program in the state of Vermont have come from Linden Institute in Linden. Um, they have a, a robust art program there and um, yeah, a good number of the winners have all come from Linden Institute. That's amazing. Well, how many participants do you anticipate this year? Um, the numbers have decreased since COVID uh, for, for one reason or another. Uh, COVID changed the dynamic and the number of entries that we receive. I anticipate maybe around 100 entries. We always hope for more. Um, you know, it, it's exciting to have all the artwork submitted. It's exciting to receive it at my office and open each one up and enter it into our database. Uh, so we always always hope for more, and I'm always looking for ways to encourage more art teachers and more teachers and more homeschool families to become involved with the, the art contest. It's a great way for kids and their families to think about the value of wildlife and the protection of the habitats that they require, and then to express that in a form of artwork um, that shows various waterfowl species. And uh, there is a list of eligible species uh, that we can accept. These are all game species. Um, you know, things that are not waterfowl, loons, um, great blue herons, kingfishers, those are not waterfowl. We're, we're looking for ducks, geese, and swans would be under the category of eligible species for waterfowl. Very interesting. Now, what are the uh, standards or the criteria for the submissions? Uh, what type of uh, artwork or what type of medium or, you know, what type of paint? What are you uh, requiring? Actually? Sure. So the, the artwork needs to be submitted in landscape format on paper or canvas, or it, it could be on anything, nine inches by 12 inches landscape format. Um, Ideally, not with any text or numbers in the artwork. You just want it as kind of the, the species and its habitat. Um, can be any medium. We have colored pencil, um, sometimes just black pen, chalk, acrylic, watercolor. We will accept any, any form of, of medium submitted. Uh, it just has to be in a landscape format and sizing is nine inches by 12 inches. So is that the size of the submission or is it the size, let's say a student is, is just painting this on an easel. Uh, how do they have to translate that directly or uh, can the nine by 12 uh, format uh, be replicated? Uh, I'm just trying to figure it, out. It has to be the original artwork on a nine by 12 um, background. I, yep. I see. Okay. And uh who does the judging? The judging, uh, so there's five judges every year, and I typically try to have one to two um, New England wildlife artists or um, youth illustrators. Um, typically, we try to have someone from either Ducks Unlimited or Vermont Fish and Wildlife. There might be a, a representative from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. We might have a representative from one of our um, legislative offices. So we've had um, judges in the past from Leahy or Sanders or Welsh's office. Um, always try to keep our congressionals actively involved with what's going on in the state. So um, we often will have a judge from the venue in which the, the judging is taking place. So this year we'll have a judge that works at VINs. Um, it varies every year, but it uh, the requirement is five judges and you try to have them from the state in which um, the judging is going to take place. And do they do that collectively or do they um, look at various pieces on their own? It's a very structured mechanism for the judging. So they're all present in the same room at the same time. Um, there's a lot of thought 
and respect that goes into the judging. Um, there's you know, as required, there's not much talking during the judging process. You don't you don't want anything to be biased. Um, and the the protocol for the judging is standardized across the country. So every state judges the artwork the exact same way as any other state. And how long does that process take? Um, for a hundred pieces of artwork, it takes a little bit over two hours. Mm -hmm. And when you say a hundred, is that a limitation uh, of the no. entries? No, we we would happily accept. I would happily accept uh, you know, two thousand pieces of artwork. There are some states, Texas, California, the Dakotas. They often see over a thousand to two thousand pieces of artwork in any given year. If you're, if you're going to judge two thousand pieces of artwork, that's a full day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're you're going to want to take a lunch break in the middle of that day. It's going to be a long day. It's very interesting. Now, how are you encouraging, uh, I know you mentioned one school, but how are you encouraging other uh, schools uh, or institutions to participate? That's always a challenge, um, just outreach. I have a email mailing list of about 150 media outlets in the state, also into New Hampshire as well. Um, I contact Vermont's homeschool network, uh, have a uh, list of 50 plus um, schools, academic institutions in the state, and also um, art camps, um, different art programs. So I'm always open to ways to expand the program and reach out to more interested individuals. Uh, this year, we put more of an effort into reaching out to organizations that are actively working um, in the in the art scene throughout the state of Vermont. And what happens, uh, uh, what is the deadline again, March? Uh, March 15th, the, March national 15th. De the national deadline for all artwork to be submitted to the state coordinators is March 15th. And what happened, maybe you could carry us through the timeline after that, because I'm sure some people are gonna re really be anxious after their uh, submissions. What, what happens next uh, in terms okay. of time? So I, I have started to receive artwork already, and we'll continue to receive that till March 15th. March 15th is the due date that they need to be submitted by. Um, I then take the following week to enter all of the um, artist information on the back of each piece of artwork as a standardized uh, form that includes all their contact information. So we have a database where all of that gets entered into, and then the artwork gets broken into those four categories that I mentioned, those four age categories that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then I put all of those, all that artwork into a storage box for the art contest. And then the art contest this year will be on March 28th. We'll have a best of show determined at that uh, date. And then we will also have first, second, and third place winners within each of those categories uh, so after the art contest all the artwork comes back to my office and then we start returning the artwork to all of the students uh, with any ribbons or awards any prizes that they may have received so there is a bit of prep work in advance of the art contest and then afterwards pulling together all of the the ribbons all of the awards that students receive um, and awards vary anywhere from um bird books natural field guides on waterfowl on birds to different types of um art medium so we might mail out uh, different palettes of watercolor paints or acrylics or colored pencils uh, sometimes the schools will send them uh, canvases for future use if they have a lot of winners from that school so it really it varies quite a bit year to year depending on what we receive for funding to pay for the awards uh, but the goal is the goal is to have the artwork back to the students in April, so that way they're aware of what they've won. You know, they have their ribbons; they can show those off at school. I know there are some schools that like to hang the students' ribbons up and the the certificates that they've received in recognition for their artwork. That's great. Well, I'm sure some people are just hearing about this. So, how does a, a teacher or an institution make sure they participate? Uh, do you have? Uh communications with them or what should someone do if they're a teacher or an administrator watching the show right now? They, 
to email me or they can call me. Um, and I don't know if you have the ability after this recording to, to post my contact information if people are interested. Um, email would probably be the best because I can send them a link for the website. I can send them the form that they can uh, fill out their contact information. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to, to communicate however it works with anyone that's interested. That's great. Well, tell us that so so they can uh, perhaps put it in the screen or, or add it to uh, the description. Tell us the email and the other. Sure. Way. Sure. My my work email address is Steve, S-T-E-V-E -E, underscore Aegis, A-G-I-U-S at F-W-S as in Fish Wildlife Service dot G-O-V. And what about an address, a uh, physical address? Physical address that the uh, artwork gets mailed to is 5396 Vermont Route 105, Brunswick, Vermont, 05905. That's great. And I, I just like uh, to ask about the, the stamps generally. How much revenue does that contribute uh, perhaps nationally, but is there a, a state allocation uh, for for this, the revenue that's generated by the stamps? Good question. So the stamps, um, you're talking about the, the hunting stamps. Right. Correct. Um, I don't know what the current cost is. So this was the stamp from 2020, 2021. It's a, it looks like a black bellied whistling duck. Um, no, this one was $25 at the time. So there's information on the back of it that explains what the, what it goes towards. Um, I don't know how much money has come in over the years through purchasing hunting stamps. I do know that it has been measured in the millions of acres of lands that have been protected for perpetuity for waterfowl in the country. So um, again, no, more than 90% of the value of an individual stamp goes directly to land conservation in the United States. That's so amazing. there's a high return on the investment of the duck stamp to think that in its history, millions of acres have been protected across the nation for waterfowl through the, through the purchase of hunting stamps. I know there's a collector's interest in this by itself. Yes. Uh, could you do you have any information about that? People who collect duck stamps and how uh, they can participate in buying them or uh, uh, enhance that hobby, and how does that benefit? Yeah, so you don't have to be a hunter to purchase the duck stamp. the The purpose of the duck stamp, first and foremost, is to protect habitat for waterfowl. So if you have an interest in conservation, if you have an interest in protecting wetlands. I would strongly encourage anyone that has an interest in protecting wetlands and protecting habitat for wildlife to purchase a waterfowl stamp. There is a direct benefit to from purchasing that stamp to permanently protecting habitat for, for wildlife. Um, in relation to stamp collectors, certainly you could collect a stamp every year. Every single year, the artwork is different. Um, just like I'd mentioned with the Junior Duck Stamp Program, there is a similar... Um, but a higher level art contest for the national contest for adults. Um, and you could you could say that the junior duck stamp program is just the runner up. It's kind of the education program that brings people uh, a better understanding of the adult um, duck stamp program. And, and, when and there's, a, there's also a considerable amount of money that goes into uh, those winners for the adult duck stamp. If you were to be the, the national winner, there is a, a prize award that goes with it. That's right. Now, is, is there one stamp or, or there, are there varying denominations? And there is one stamp each year. Yep. So yeah, there's going to be the whoever, whoever was the winner for the artwork, their artwork is going to be on the stamp for that year. Uh, and there's just one, one type of stamp for each year and it varies each year. That's great. Well, how can people get um, more information? Or uh, uh, I want to ask, uh, do you have, uh, I know this is a tough question, but do you have personnel who might be available to visit schools or, or uh, academies uh, in connection with this contest? 
or Doug Un Stanton? Yeah. Unfortunately, um, it is just me overseeing the program in the state of Vermont. Um, I have received requests to visit various schools. I'm based out of the Northeast Kingdom. So if I receive a request um, within, say, a local driving distance, an hour away from the office, I can typically accommodate those. But unfortunately, um, you know, Vermont's not a big state, but a request to, say, visit Rutland, Rutland or, or Bennington um, just isn't logistically feasible. Um, so I'm happy to assist providing information online or mailing people information. Um, but this is a an additional duty as assigned. It is not my job as a wildlife manager. Um, it's just something that I'm passionate about and want to encourage more youth to be involved with the art program. Um, but no, we don't we don't have a staff. I don't have a staff directly involved with this. It's just me. I understand completely. Um, now, uh, what are the uh, plans for the future? I know we're, gonna, we're dealing with this year's contest. Uh, what, what are any plans that you or the agency have uh, not only about this, but in things in general that you're looking to draw attention to uh, some any uh, legislative initiatives or anything like that, that the public can get involved. with. Um, so as it relates to the junior duck stamp program um, for in the state of Vermont, the federal program, I will try to have the judging take place at a different venue and a different location, geographic location in the state each year, the best that I can. So though I just said I don't travel throughout the state to give programs to various schools, I do intend to have the art contest occur in different geographic locations to expand the visibility of the program and the art contest. So like I said, last year was in the Fairbanks Museum in St. Johnsbury. This year it'd be at Vins and Queechy. Next year, I'm hoping to have it in a different geographic portion of the Vermont. Um, that hasn't been clarified yet, but hopefully we can hit Western Vermont or Southern Vermont. Um, you know, that's one way to expand the outreach of it. And then public engagement. Um, no, it's, I, I think really what would be helpful with this is if, if people are interested in waterfowl and youth artwork, um, they can certainly reach out to me and I can help point them in the right direction um, is, is you know, what I would encourage people on this matter. If they have ideas on how to reach out to more, more students or art programs or teachers, I'm happy to have those conversations. That's great. Cause sometimes you see uh, at libraries, for example, uh, artwork or uh, submissions from other kinds of contests that yeah. will visit that library. Uh, I just want to see if you'd be open to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly open to the conversation for sure. That's great. That's great. So this is uh, very interesting and uh, uh, I'd like to give you the opportunity to uh, give our viewers a, a final message or a, a, any kind of uh, encouragement you want to give at this time. I appreciate that. Thank you, Dennis. I would say that the reason that I continue to administer this program in the state of the Vermont, and I previously had when I lived and worked in Maine, um, it's a it's a great and unique way for kids in this state to express their view and and what they think and appreciate of wildlife in this case it's waterfowl so it's a great way for people to it's a great way for kids for families to sit down and think about what wildlife and wetlands mean to them and to put you know that thought in their head onto paper to express their um, their interest and their appreciation for you know the the living world, the natural resources that are around them, around their home or in their community. So it's a great way to connect science and wildlife conservation through artwork. That's great. Well, thanks very much, Steve. This has been really interesting, and I want to thank you for appearing on Positively Vermont. Uh, my guest today has been Steve Ages. Uh, the Wildlife Refuge Manager for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, located in Brunswick, Vermont, and uh, keep in touch. Thank you all for watching.